What's up? I'm the Zim. This is the Zim video. Thanks for joining me. Um, if you're new to the channel, welcome. If you've been here before, glad you're back. I've been doing. I've been a rideshare driver since February 2nd, 2017, and this video is essentially my kind of two-year review of driving. It's been a little over two years since I started driving, and I wanted to give a kind of a review, kind of some ideas and stuff. But I also wanted to, uh, you know, tell you my the secret to success in rideshare driving from my perspective is what I use as the title. So we're going to talk about that first. But before we get going, like I said, I've been driving for two years. I've done 11,362 rides total. I've driven mostly for Lyft, but then I just recently started driving for Uber as well. So I have some experience with both platforms, both major platforms. Um, but I just wanted to give you a little bit of a context so you aren't like, who the heck is this guy? Why should I listen to him? Been doing it for a minute, so maybe um, maybe I have something to share that you might find interesting. So let's get into the title of this video, which is the secret to success with rideshare. And first off, we I feel like we have to talk about defining success a little bit. We have to define the idea of success because, especially with rideshare driving, one of the main things that I've learned over the two years of driving is there's no no one perfect way to do this job. There's no one definitive. This is how you need to do rideshare driving. There's so many different versions and so many different um, requirements and realities for people, why they do this job and how they fit into their schedule. There's part-time, there's full-time, there's all these different things. So we have to understand that. So defining success is important in a couple of ways that not only the reality of what you're able to do with the job, but then also your personal like definition of success in terms of does it mean money? Does it mean work-life balance? Does it mean, what, what does it mean to you? So I'm going to tell you what it means to me and give you some context so that you can decide how that fits into your thing. First off, I have to say is that I'm a full-time driver. I've been driving full-time since I started. I average every week that I drive, I average probably around 120 rides a week, about 46 app hours of driving. That's when the app is on, my butt is in the seat, I'm driving around. So I'm a full-time driver, so that's going to kind of play into my personal definition of success. And then the other part of the success is the way I'm defining it for this video is I've been able to do rideshare driving full time for two years um, and survive and live. I live in San Diego, which isn't the cheapest city in the world to live in. Um, and I've been able to make it happen. I'm a single father of two children that I have half the time. And there are you know, constraints like that on my lifestyle. But I've been able to make it such that rideshare driving has afforded me a lifestyle that I can live. I don't, I'm not getting rich off rideshare driving, but I am um, paying my bills. And that for me is like, that's the success that I'm talking about right now is the ability to work for myself and pay my bills and do it with rideshare driving. So the secret to it. Okay, so how do you make it? How, how is it possible to do it? What's the secret in a way? What, what am I calling the secret? And it's really boils down to an idea that I'm sure if you're of the kind of success mindset and trying to be self-employed and self-motivated and all that kind of stuff. You've, I'm sure you've heard this many times before, but it just boils down to having, putting in the time and having patience is really what it boils down to that I found with this job. This job is not a get rich quick type of job in any way whatsoever. You have to be smart, you have to be patient, you have to put in the time. Like I said, already I do 46 app hours a week or 45 app hours a week somewhere in that range 40 to 50 let's say of app hours and that's my butt is in the seat driving around with the app on it's not I'm thinking about doing the job I um, am you know um, taking breaks but counting that as work hours not it's the actual time the app is on and I've got I'm waiting for a request from the ride from the from the platform so it's like and that means you're actually devoting more time to the job. If you do it the way that I do it, 46 app hours means you're actually devoting more time to the job than just um, the amount of app hours that it says because of the nature of the job. You know, times you need to take breaks, times you need to you eat lunch, just different things that come up because you need to get out of the car every once in a while. So it just means, you know, putting in the time and having patience because the other thing that I've noticed in the San Diego market anyway, Rides aren't rides don't come back to back. You know, there's bell curves throughout the day when demand gets better and, and worse. And 
So you have to be patient through those bell curves and just put in the time and know that you're going to be waiting sometimes for rides and sometimes it's going to be there's going to be more rides back to back. You know, different events and holidays and times of year make a difference. So just putting in the time and having patience is the biggest, I think, key to being success, a successful ride share driver. One of the terms I like to say is I call it slow money. The money is there. It's just slow. All right. So that's kind of the secret. That's my secret. All right. Now I'm going to talk about a kind of a brief overview of the two years I've been driving. I'm going to break it up into three points. Um, the first one is why I started driving. The second one, kind of why I started driving in a brief history. The second point is like impressions of the job as a whole. It'll probably mix in with why I started driving a little bit. I feel like some of those concepts will cross over. And then the third point is just now what, like what am I going to do now? You know, what's the plan now for the next year? Um, first, let's start off with, you know, I've been recording videos about my rideshare driving experience since I started. I've done a whole bunch. I'm up to what I call version or volume three. So it's always consisted of how much I made. And then lately it's been questions from you and then also just experiences that I've had driving. Sorry, all right, so this video, because of those videos, I'm not gonna get into every single nitty gritty detail of rideshare driving with you. I'm just gonna try to hit some points and hopefully you'll enjoy this video. And um, yeah, so let's do this. <laughs> we got the three points, so why I started driving. I moved to San Diego in 2017 and I decided in that transition from Seattle to San Diego, I wanted to, um, I wanted to do more with my music and art, and but I also needed a job. So this kind of on-demand jobs kind of came to awareness to me. This ideas like Lyft, Uber, Instacart, you know, Postmates, all those things, kind of were like on. Like I was like, oh, let me try one of these, and I decided on the rideshare thing, and I started with Lyft actually. And I uh, been doing Lyft mostly through the two years. I just recently started doing Uber. But um, with Lyft and uh, the rideshare driving, I was what I liked about it. The idea was just that freedom of working for somebody else. Like I just wasn't, I didn't, you know, both wanted to do more of my art and music, and also didn't want to work for somebody. And I was just like over that concept. I'm still like really, really not into the idea of getting a nine to five working for somebody else. Just does not excite me whatsoever. Um, and so that's a big reason why I started doing this job. I realized pretty quickly that, you know, in order to make this job sustainable, in order to make my ends meet doing this job, um, it required a lot of my time. It required a lot of my time and a lot of my energy. And due to the nature of the job, um, it's pretty fatiguing. It's not an easy, you know, a lot of people think that I've experienced, a lot of people think just sitting in your car driving around is easy. It's not easy whatsoever. So what happened was, required a lot of my energy and time and so I wasn't able to put as much into my art and music as I was hoping to. However, the reason I still do it is like I said already is because I did not want to work for somebody else. The idea of working for somebody else just made me just want to feel nauseous. I just couldn't handle the concept of it. So I kind of, you know, when I started the job I, you know, tied it in, I tried to tie it into my art and music a little bit with these videos like I really enjoy making YouTube videos I really like, enjoy creating things and I was like I wanted to I had already started making videos on my YouTube channel and I was like what can I do now that I'm dri rideshare driving so I started a video series called my rideshare experience as I mentioned already and um that was a big motivator for me to keep doing the job and still have an outlet to create things that I wanted to make so that was a big the big deal for me is the the evolution of my channel as well as rideshare driving have gone hand in hand in a lot of ways because you as a, a person of interest to rideshare driving has helped grow my channel which is pretty awesome pretty awesome so like it took me some some kind of bullet points of like the two-year span of driving uh, a couple of things to note that you can check out more on my video series right Ride rideshare experience is just like discovering a strategy it took me like six months to really settle in on a strategy and when I did my one year anniversary, my one year review of this drive, I kind of really explained my strategy and that's 
been my strategy ever since. It's tweaked a little bit since. Um, as if you watch all my videos, you can see where I started to adjust things. But the overall concept of my strategy is really spelled out pretty nicely in the one year review video that I made. It's just how I do the job. Basically, the bottom line is I do a split shift. Um, I didn't want to work at night. I didn't want to deal with throw up. I didn't want to deal with that kind of concept. So I was working within the day schedule. Um, basically 6 a.m. to 11.30 p.m. What are the best hours that I found to work within that, that span? And it's kind of do a split shift between 7, um, like 6 to noon, and then from 3 till I'm done. I go for 24 hours a day. is a big part of my strategy. Learning in my area in San Diego, 24 t turned out to be kind of my magic number. It was like the, the amount of rides that made sense for full-time driving, five days a week, 120 rides a week. That was the magic number. So that's my strategy started to formulate around six months of driving, um, and then really settled in as time went on. And now I'm just like I really have honed in on my strategy, which is a great thing. So like I said, I'm not going to get into every single detail about my driving over the last um, two years, but I wanted to kind of bring it up to date in a sense. And one of the biggest things that I've kind of biggest bullet points of doing this job that I've experienced is this idea of, I've noticed that um, for myself and I've seen from a lot of other drivers when they first start driving, so there's like this driver's high that happens and maybe it's like the same thing that happened for me which is like you can make money and not have a boss and you have flexibility of schedule and different things like that. So like early on there's this like desire to kind of drive as much as possible and do all this kind of stuff. and. Um, and really like the, the, the enjoyment of the job is pretty high at first. For me, over the two years of doing the job, the, the high has gone away, the reality settled in, the routine has settled in, and what has, at this point where I'm at right now, is I'm pretty darn burnt out of this job. I got majorly burnt out at a point earlier on because when I first started driving, I was trying to drive all the time, and I learned quickly that that was not a sustainable model I could not maintain that about and that was about the six month mark as I mentioned already was when I started to develop a strategy for how to do this job sustainably I needed to make a change I couldn't try to drive all the time so I got into a good strategy and now that you know it's been two years deep into doing the job you know the routine of it what it requires how much I make off of what it takes is not quite the balance isn't quite there to make me feel feel really good to make me see this job as like a you know career type job one of the things I say in my my um, car to a lot of passengers is um, it's a job that it's just like when they say ask me if I like the job or something like that I say it's like it's like any job you have to do to, because you need a job to make money it's on that plane for me it's on that like working at a grocery store or flipping burgers at a fast food joint it's very much like that like there is that kind of essence to it. There's not really a lot of future. You don't have. You're not really guaranteed of what the platforms are gonna do. Like they, you know, you don't know if you're gonna be able to make more money or less money. You don't know what's happening. There's no guarantee. There's no union. There's no. There's no kind of contract of like your employment in the, any kind of way. It's just. It's very open ended. So it's like. It's very hard to know, like what to make it a sustainable like do it for the rest of your life type of job is and then also just the fatigue of sitting in the car for so long and being in that position is really hard on your body and takes its toll after a while so for me personally I've discovered that you know this is not a forever type of job this is not a long term type of job for me um, because I don't feel like I get compensated well enough for it but then also just the fatigue physical like fatigue it takes on your body the physical toll it takes on your body to be in the car that long is is not something that I want to do indefinitely so those that's kind of like the the first point like the kind of a really condensed arc of this job you could definitely go into my other videos and just kind of nerd out on my experience and I'd be happy to answer more questions that you might have regarding the job um, you can do it in the comments or you can do it um, many different ways, email and at an Instagram account I have. I'll mention those at the end of this video. The second part I want to talk about, impressions of the companies. I started to kind of tease this a little bit just a moment ago with 
Lyft and Uber. And basically, you know, the I don't feel like, as a full-time driver, I don't feel like the companies value me as an employee, as a full-time employee. I don't see, from the moment that I've started the job till now, what I've seen, the trends happening, the trends are how can we pay the employees less? That's or How can we pay drivers less is the trend that I've seen through the arc of doing this job. They're not looking for ways to get you more money. They're not looking for ways to sit, to value you as a, like if you decide to be a full-time driver, there's no like, oh, you've put in, you know, 50,000 or 5,000 rides, you know, let's give you a pay bump. Let's make your percentage higher than somebody else. Oh, you maintain a, you know, 5 point, you know, 4.95 or better rating, or your average rating stays at a, you know, 4.9 or better. Let's pay you more. They, there's no, there's no incentives that really make it worth doing it long term. The incentive structure right now is all based on a weekly incentive. Some, not every market gets them. I see it all the time on the you know rideshare forums. People say we don't get any bonuses in our market. You know, depending on where you are, different things. And for me in San Diego, if I didn't get the ride challenge bonus and the um, the quest ride bonuses that Uber offers and that Lyft offer in this market, it would not be sustainable. I would not be able to survive off this job if they did not give me a little bit more money for doing the job. Um, Because the base rates are just not enough to be, to survive off of. There would be no way I could survive off this. And again, you know, as I mentioned at the beginning of the video, is like, I'm a single dad with two children. You know, maybe my overhead is a little higher than some people's would be, but my story is not that uncommon, so I don't feel like what I would require to survive is that uncommon for a lot of people. If you, and that's where it kind of plays back into what I mentioned earlier as well, with like, you know, this is just a job that you need a job to make money, and it fits in with those like fast food, like your first job you get kind of aspect. It's not like a this is a career type job. Um, because you know it's like if you don't have if your overhead's really low you're renting a room in a house and you don't have kids and you're a, you're single then possibly off of the same amount of money that I make you might do really well but for me I have a requirements that require me to make a little bit more to to be sustainable to make it happen so and I don't see Uber and Lyft uh, making that possible for me I just don't see the future in it and, and from the arc, like I said already, from the trends that I've been seeing, they just look for ways to make it so you make less. They're not looking for ways to make it so you make more money. Um, and then anybody that, like I said already, the bonuses aren't bonuses. The bonuses are what make the job sustainable. They, the terminology of saying they're bonuses is kind of a misnomer. They're, they should be, they shouldn't even be called bonuses because it makes it sound like you're getting more and it's extra. No, it's like you need to make those to even make the job sustainable. So that's that's a big part of what I feel about the, the companies. I don't feel like they're looking out for the best interest of their drivers. I think they want to find ways to pay drivers less, you know, charge the passengers less so that they can compete and be you know, make their company more money or whatever. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know the full factor, but that's the way it feels to me. So that's kind of a big thing. What, what now? So like, what now? I just kind of did a little rant on the companies and like I told you, it's not the best job so for me, but I'm still doing it. So what now for me? I just got accepted to San Diego State University to go to grad school. And at that time, I plan to drive, you know, very minimally on weekends or something like that. So I have about, you know, six, seven months of driving, full-time driving left. And then um, at that time, you know, when I'm in school, I won't be driving full time anymore. So for me personally, there is like a transition out of this job. I'm, I've been doing it, you know, will be almost three years by the time I'm done. And I, it was a pretty good experience. It was a good run. Um, you know, who knows, maybe I'll be doing it longer after, or, you know, I don't know. I don't know. At least the job is there. At least I know how to do it now. I know some strategies on, you know, good practices of how to do it. Um, that it's I can access it probably whenever I want as long as I have a car I can just get in my car and, and I know how long it takes to make 
so much money and I can just make it happen. But um, but yeah, that's for me personally, there is like a transition time. I'm not going to be doing this job forever. Um, but I know I know now that there's kind of like a, a stopping point for me. All right, and that's about it. So I think that does it. That's kind of a review of my two years of riding, driving for Lyft and Uber. Um, if you have any questions for me, let's uh, put it on the screen here. But at RideShareZim is my Instagram account that I dedicate to my rideshare driving. I got the underscore Zim at Hotmail.com. And I got um, comments on this video or others of my rideshare experience videos. So check it out. In the description below, there'll be a link to my playlist of all my rideshare videos that you can check out. So I'd love it if you did that. And of course, subscribe to the channel with the pop-up on the screen or down below in, you know, look for the little red subscribe button and um, click it. I'd love your support with this channel. All right, until next time, be excellent to each other. May your rides be long, your tips be big. Peace.